Hello again everybody. Um, this is our last music lesson together for now. Um, so let's enjoy ourselves. I really hope you've enjoyed it so far. I definitely have. I love teaching you about dinosaurs. I love making dinosaur sounds and I love being able to put dinosaurs and music together. How exciting. So we have Last time we had a look at some rhythm notation and we actually looked at crotchets and minims and semi-breves and quavers. That's really clever stuff, you know. And we clapped out rhythms, didn't we? We did stegosaurus and some other ones. Um, we've had a sing of the dinosaur stomp, haven't we? That was fun. Um, and we have used our voices to create sounds and to kind of do sound effects for some dinosaurs and things, haven't we? That was fun. So today we're going to do some more sound effects and we're going to create something called a soundscape. That's why I've got all of these bits out here because we're going to use some things that you've got all around your house to make music. Did you know that so many things can be instruments if you just use your imagination and you just think, oh, what sound can that make and how can I use that? We can use our voices and we can use our bodies as well. We can easily do percussion with our bodies, can't we? So if we're gonna make a soundscape, we kind of need something to make it for. So we're gonna watch a clip of some dinosaurs. There's no sound on it. So let's watch it together and then you can, we can create the sounds ourselves. Okay, here we go. So here's the Brachiosaurus. There's lots of them roaming around. Some interesting facts for us. Now, if they've got giant front legs, they would be making a sound when they walked, wouldn't they? And if they spend their whole day eating, they'd be making a sound when they eat as well, wouldn't they? Can you see that? It's raining, look. It's raining today at my house and it's making a sound on the ground and on the roof. I think the rain would make a sound on the trees, wouldn't it? So there we go. That's the clip that we're going to try and make a soundscape for. So we've got the dinosaurs, we've got them wandering around, we've got them eating out of the trees. Let's explore some sounds. You might want to go off into your house, just pause the video for a moment if you wanted to. Go and see if you can find anything that makes sounds or have a look at what I've got and then pause the video and go and see if you can find something that will make a similar sound. So I've collected a few things. You can use anything. There'll be things everywhere that make amazing sounds. And don't forget, we're gonna to need to use our voices to roar as well, aren't we? We can use our hands, maybe even on the table to do. Maybe that makes good footprints for the Brachiosaurus. I don't know. if it might be a bit of a lower sound the footprints of the brachiosaurus the footsteps as they walk because they were really big feet and really heavy what else could I use for footsteps let's try this I don't know I think that's even they might even be higher than that louder that's for sure but they're not necessarily a low sound are they hmm let's try the biscuit tin Ooh, what's in the biscuit tin 
bourbons and fig rolls. I love them. Uh, Mrs. Holland, don't eat a biscuit now. No, I'll save the biscuits for later, but we could use the lid and the tin. Let's see if that makes a good sound. That's louder. That's a lower sound as well. That would make a good footstep, wouldn't it? Imagine the Brachiosaurus. Walking around together, there'd be lots of big loud footsteps. It would kind of echo, wouldn't it? So it would, the sound would, here's a big word for you, the sound would reverberate. That means it would just bounce around all over the land and around the trees. So you'd hear their footsteps from quite a long way away. Okay, so let's use the biscuit tin for the footsteps. That's a good idea. That one is low and quite loud. So that's a good footsteps sound. Um, what else have I got? What else did we need to make a bit of a sound for? So I think we should add some roars ourselves so we can do Roar! or we could do the kind of sound that they make calling to each other. Hmm. We'll watch the clip again in a minute and decide which sound they might want to make. There was definitely, there was definitely eating and the rustling of the trees, wasn't there? So I've got my salt shaker. That's just got some salt in it. Does this sound like the leaves rustling? It does. That could work. Although I'm not sure they're blowing really fast in the wind, are they? It's a good sound. Maybe we could try that again for the rain. I don't know, maybe we could use that. Oh, you're getting salt everywhere. Maybe we could try that for the rain. Hmm, what else? Oh, now I've got this. This is amazing. This is kind of called cellophane and it's, it's just for crafts. It's for something when you, you want to make something like a stained glass window. We have some of this stuff at school, but you might be able to find a piece of paper. And if you rustle it together, have a listen. If you do it fast, it's loud, like a thunderstorm. If you do it slow, that sounds a bit like the leaves rustling in the trees. And then when the Brachiosaurus comes to have a bite of the leaves, you could do it like that. As they're munching away on the leaves. What do you think? That would sound good. I bet paper works as well. Paper would do the same thing. Okay, so we've got this that we can use for the rustling of the leaves. You have to kind of think about how you're moving it to change the sound. And then when they munch, Squeeze it like that together. That would be good. So that's the leaves. So we've got the footsteps, we've got the leaves. I think we need a bit of rain. So we've got the salt shaker again. That, that could work, but you kind of have to shake it. We, we kind of need the rain sticks that you get at school, don't you? Mm. Don't know, I'm not sure that's working all that well. What about this one? Oh, hang on a minute. That makes a really, really good footstep, doesn't it? It's low and loud. Let's just compare it with the biscuit tin. Hang on. Oh, biscuits. No, don't eat them, Mrs. Holland. Now that is a good sound. I think I, I think I'm going to choose the cereal though. That sounds a bit more thundery. Oh yeah, yeah. Shreddy's win. Shreddy's win for the footsteps. So we've got the footsteps. We've got the rustling leaves. We've got the munching. We've got a roar or a sound that the dinosaurs make, and we just need the rain. Salt shaker isn't going to work. Um, this is my egg basket. And I, I looked at it and I thought, I wonder if this makes a good sound because can you see, it's got lots of wire just in kind of in lines. And I thought, it's almost like a gyro. We've got the gyros at school, you know, the, the wooden things that look a bit like a rocket. And then they've got, they've got the kind of corrugated edge and you scrape it like a scraper and it makes a kind of, um, that could make a kind of rainy sound. So let's try it on my egg basket. Have a listen to this. 
Oh. It's fairly quiet. Tell you what. It does sound like the rain, but I might add a sound that I can make as well, like this. That sounds like the kind of the continuous rain, doesn't it, that you saw in the film. Right. Let's go back to the film and we're going to try and build up our soundscape. We'll talk about it as we go and just check our sounds are working and when we want to do the sounds. And then we'll have another go at the end and see if we can pull them all together. So have a look around your house. Check you've got a few things around you to try and make those sounds. If you need to pause it, just pause me and I'll pause for a moment till you're ready, then you can come back. Don't forget you've got your voices. Don't forget you've got your bodies. That make, they make good sounds, don't they? You could even stamp your feet. They make good sounds. So here we go. Let's put the clip on again and see if we can start to build our soundscape. This is exciting because I think it's going to make it even more realistic. I think it's going to make it come alive. Here we go. Here's the Brachiosaurus. Now they're walking around, aren't they? See if you can get it in time with that one. Can you see that one walking? See the legs moving? I've got it in time. You could even shake it a little bit for the tails moving. There he is, looking right up high in the tree. Shall we do the gentle rustling of the leaves? Gentle leaves rustling in the wind. Rustling leaves, and here he goes, coming to take a bite and chewing it. There he is, there he's chewing the leaves and a big munch again. There he goes. Now, here comes the rain look. There's the rain. A few more footsteps again. And maybe a roar. Ooh! To finish. I don't know about you. But when you watch something like that and then all of a sudden it's got sound effects to it, doesn't it make it even more realistic? Can't you just imagine that you are there walking with those dinosaurs and hearing all the sounds that they make? It's quite hard to do it on your own. If you've got a brother or sister at home or you've got a grown-up with you, they might even want to join in. You could even FaceTime a friend if you wanted to and see if you can do the whole soundscape together. One of you could make the rain noise while the other person does the footsteps at the same time or the swishing of the tail. So that would be quite good if it was in teams, wouldn't it? See if you can get some more people involved, see if we can do it again. And this time we're going to do it quite confidently and I'm not going to talk as we do it. We're just going to add the sounds as we watch the dinosaurs moving and going about their business and what they're doing, I wonder what's going through their heads. Do you think they have a dinosaur language? Do you think they can talk to each other? Maybe they go, oh, and what they mean is, come down to the river for a drink, or, oh, I'm so tall I can get to the top of this tree to eat the leaves, but you're not as tall as me. <laughs> I imagine things like that. I don't know. We'll never know. I don't suppose they did talk, but they did communicate with each other, didn't they? And there was definitely lots of sounds that could be heard. So we're going to do it again. I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to make the sounds this time, okay? So let's play the clip again. Here we go.
there we go everybody. Wow, well done. I would absolutely love to hear your soundscapes. If there's any way you can video them, you can film them, maybe on a grown-up's phone or on an iPad or something, send them over to Miss Catton and Miss Tiller and then they can send them to me and I would love to see them, see what you've done and hear the sounds that you've come up with because obviously in my house, these are the things that I've found. In your house, you will have lots of different things and of course, you can make music with all of them. So well done. Maybe you could even do a bit of an experiment sometimes. Sometimes, if you're watching something, turn the sound off. See if you can be the person who does the sound effects and creates the soundscape for whatever it is you're watching. It's really funny when you change your voice to match what you can see on the telly, isn't it? But also, if you're watching something where there's, there might be cars zooming around or there might be dinosaurs again or it could be anything, look around you. Think about all the sounds around you and all the music that you can make around you and you can create your soundscape to anything. So well done, that was brilliant. I have loved teaching music to you, I have loved it. Shall we just finish off by singing the dinosaur stomp together again? Let's just do it one more time. Oh, that sounds like our cereal box. walking past. I have loved teaching you music. Stay safe everybody and we'll see you soon.